Hello and welcome and good morning everyone joining us here online um, in the safety and comfort of your own homes. I'm Pastor Kim Sturch, the pastor of Grace and Emmanuel Lutheran of Sandstone, Minnesota. Uh, we have a few announcements before we begin today. I'm coming to you from outside the Church of the Woods just a sign to you that God lives and breathes in all places and spaces, not just within our buildings. Um, I've had a lot of people call and talk to me this week. A lot of feelings have come through, not only on their part, but also my part. Um, there has been a big push to once again uh, be able to have to wear masks. The surging is happening across the country. If you're watching the news and see that Texas and Florida and Arizona and other places are becoming hot spots, and we are not isolated in that. We have been miracul miraculously uh, safe and uh, protected with all this, but our rates are surging and we need to be careful in that fact. The reason I would like to say now here, we have a smart team that has been developed. A smart team with um, people from both churches have joined together to help out um, and look at all these regulations and these different ideas that have been uh, given to us. Um, these different plans and strategies that uh, need to be uh, put in place before we can open our buildings. And the Safety Smart team has decided uh, to remain online for the time being in the hopes of possibly uh, within August at some point uh, beginning our drive-in worship if we can get our technology figured out. But the Smart team has worked long and hard alongside of myself. I've been collecting all the information for the last four months and every week it changes. So that is a lot of fun. All right. So we have information uh, and uh, guidelines set to us uh, by our Synod, uh, Northeastern Minnesota Synod, and our Bishop and Synod Office. Our Bishop is looking out for us in care and concern, making sure and understanding that a lot of churches have vulnerable adults. And we're understanding more and more now that this coronavirus is not only affecting older people as we thought, but it is harming younger people as well. People within my age bracket, the 30 to 40 year old age range. So it's not just older people we are looking out for. The other thing is we've talked to our insurance companies and talked about liability. We have liability insurance for our churches when people fall, when people hurt themselves, have an accident at church. Now, if we think about this virus in that context, we have to have enough money to be able to take care of uh, those situations. If someone comes in our building and contracts the virus within our building, we are liable. And if we prove that we aren't liable, people can still sue us, which would be a very sad situation as well. Our SMART team, when talking about this uh, and looking at the different phase openings, have decided that the best possible option and the safest option for all of us would be to stay online. And so for right now, I ask you to have great patience. We all are so tired of being home and have reg having regulations and all this things, all the things and not be able to do the things we want to do, the things that give us great comfort and joy. And you know what, I miss it too. But the sooner we uh, follow the recommendations of the CDC, the Minnesota Department of Health, uh, the love and care that has been given to us by our Synod, the sooner we can get through this and hopefully back into our buildings, worshiping and honoring one another and our God in the way that we have been asked to do. And with that said, I ask you when you come in the buildings to have one of these, a mask, okay? I know these aren't fun. They are not enjoyable to wear in any way, shape, or form, especially in the hot Minnesota weather. However, this is a, the ability to not only give some protection to yourself as well as other people. If they have the virus and they don't know it, you are taking the step to protect yourself. If you have it and you don't know it and you're wearing a mask, you are taking a step to reduce the risk of contracting it or spreading it. So please, when you're in our buildings, our, our our liability insurance is asking us to have everyone wear a mask when you come in and use hand sanitizer 
when you enter and when you exit. And I know it sounds like I'm trying to be a stickler here, but this is just an act of love and kindness, not only for you, but for our neighbor, our churches, our whole world. We want this to be done. And the simplest, easiest solution is to do this, okay? Let's not let our egos get in the way of things, our, our lack of not wanting to change, you know, uh, get in the way. Let's wear these, okay? Thank you. All right, I'm off my soapbox now. Okay, we're gonna start church. If you haven't said hello to people yet this morning, um, I ask you to do so already. Even if you are not a part of our church and you are just joining us today, we would love to see who and where you're uh, worshiping with us from. Write your name in the comments, okay? Thank you very much. Giving, as usual, we have been we have set up online and mobile app giving through Giving Plus. Uh, Eric will bring up the screen as we have been doing the last four months. And um, if you don't feel comfortable with that, the addresses of each PO box for each church is listed there as well. And then once again, we appreciate all the giving that has been done through this time and pace, or place. Your faithful giving has really helped us be able to stay on track with our budget and meet our budgetary needs as well as our missional needs. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Please keep up the good work, okay? All right, let us begin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Our gathering hymn today comes to you. It has uh, been recorded and uh, performed by Steve and Laura McCann, and the song is Near the Cross. It has been attached to you within the email document that has been sent out to you. Um, this is a beloved hymn, an older hymn, so please sing along if you know the words, and uh, otherwise sing along using our melody. Thank you again, Steve and Laura, for your gift and talent. We appreciate it.
Thank you very much, Stephen Lohr. That was beautiful and wonderful. We continue with our confession and forgive us. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the one God whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin to one another. Reconciling God. We confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you pro provide enough for all. We have abused your good creation for our own benefit and we fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us, and in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in the newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ. Jesus, through whom we have ob obtained grace upon grace, our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope. For hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Faithful God, most merciful judge, you care for your children with firmness and compassion. By your spirit, nurture us who live in your kingdom that we may be rooted in the way of your son. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our readings today are read by Irene Anderson of Emmanuel Lutheran. We give thanks for her uh, willingness to be able to do this for us and so we can see another familiar face that we miss and love and the uh, reminder that we are connected in the spiritual body, not just in our church building, but in all of God's kingdom all around us and the spirit guides us thank you again irene the first scripture reading for today is from the book of psalms it's psalm 86 verses 11 through 17. teach me your way o lord and i will walk in your truth give me an undivided heart to revere your name i will thank you o lord my god with all my heart and glorify your name forevermore for great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the pit of death. The arrogant rise up against me, O God, and a band of violent people seeks my life. They have not set you before their eyes. But you, O Lord, are gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and full of kindness and truth. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Give your strength to your servant and save the child of your handmaid. Show me a sign of your favor so that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Our second reading for today is from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 12 through 25. For Paul, true spirituality means that we experience the reality of the spirit, which enables us to pray as God's children, keeps us in solidarity with creation, and gives us unseen hope that God will liberate us and creation from bondage to death and decay. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness to our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, 
heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we, we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God, for the creation that was subjected to fertility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first few fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved, now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, uh, from the 13th chapter, verses 24 through 30, 36 through 43. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus tells a parable about the coexistence of good and evil in this world. God's judgment will remove all evildoers and causes of sin, but not until the end of human history. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in the field. But while everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed the seed among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, the, the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seeds in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? Master, he answered, an enemy has done this to us. The slave said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, no, for in the gathering in the weeds, you will uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned. But we will gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house and with his disciples approaching him, saying, explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. And Jesus answered, the one who sold the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world and the good seed are the children of the kingdom of God. The weeds are the children of the evil one or sin. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is at the end of the age and the reapers are the angels of God. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age, the Son of Man will send his angels and will collect out of his kingdom of God all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the fire, and there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of God of their Father. Let anyone with ears hear this message. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you. Oh Christ. We move on to the children's sermon. Okay, hello everyone. Do you guys want to say hello? Hi. hello? Hi. We're doing the children's sermon from our front steps. It's nice and sunny up here. And this is kind of near our front garden. Now let me ask you guys, um, what is the little, the little, um, insect that flies around and goes from flower to flower to flower. What's that called? A bee. A bee. honey bee, right? A honey bee. And do you, are bees scary or are they not scary? Sometimes like when they just like come out of nowhere and you're just like, ah! But like when you can see them on flowers, and, they're like, and look bee, at them, they're so cute. And yeah. But um, bees has sharp things on their butt. They have sharp things on their butts, Arlo says. Those are called what? Stingers. 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 Why do you think a bee has a stinger? Uh, to protect itself. To protect itself. Does it want to sting people? No. Yeah. No. no. There's other, other bee um, uh, imposters that try to look like bees that do sting a lot, don't they? And they're kind of mean. Wasps. 
We're not going to talk about them. We're talking about bees today. Why do you think I'm talking about bees today? Jesus has a story. And we have chalk right here. Yeah, we're going to use the chalk in a minute. Jesus has a story today that he talks about wheat and weeds and how some people, they got planted together and they didn't know how to tell the difference between the two. And the master of the house said to leave them and let them grow together and they'd figure it out later. And you know what? God calls us and tells us that sometimes we are wheat and weed as well. Do you think the bees, when they're going around to all the plants, think, I'm not going to go to that plant because it's a weed? Or do they just go to every plant? They just go to every plant. Like, and I want food, with, I'll get it. And you want, let's talk about flowers. You want to talk about flowers? Uh -huh. What are your favorite flowers? I like milk flowers. Milkweed? That's mm -hmm. a really good flower for butterflies and other plants, or yeah. other insects. I like bee balm, don't I? Mm -hmm. uh, They're over there. Yes, I have bee balm. I like that. And I also like Russian sage, and I also like irises. Penny, what kind of flowers do you I like? I like roses and like lilies. Roses and lilies. And Eric is here off to the side trying to make sure that we're all safe <laughs> and all taking care of one another. But Eric, what is your favorite flower? Oh, he likes a lot of prairie flowers, like, like flowers. big blue stem maybe, yeah, and some corn flowers. Like, corn flowers. Do you like mm -hmm. blue ones? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Big blue stem can be like nine to ten feet tall in a prairie. Isn't that cool? Now Super let's make cool. A bee. Yeah. All right, can you scoot back? We're going to make a bee, and I'm going to tell you something about bees and Jesus. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to tilt this down so you guys can see the concrete here that we're going to be coloring on. Okay? Arlo, can you back up? We're gonna we're gonna color right here, right by between your feet. Okay. Right here. All right. No, so I Jesus don't. is often connected to bees. Stop. Why? Okay, hold on, hold on. It's okay. We're, we're connected here, to okay? bees. Or Jesus is connected to bees. How do you think Jesus is connected to bees? Uh. He cares for and, nature and, and all people and, and places. bees get flowers from their honey. They get flowers from their honey. So bees make honey. That's a good point, Arlo. And that Jesus cares for all people. So I'm making a bee body here, a bee body. Okay. Oh, this is its head. This is its head, yes. I'm glad you identified that. That's not its body. All right, so... This is its little body and head, okay? You guys can kind of, here, we'll so, show you, okay? See it? Okay, back up, Arlo, so I can I can draw, okay? There's his little eyes. He's got a little <laughs> smile. Yes, hello. All right, so Jesus is connected to bees because of that honey, first to that honey. His life and his care for all people is, I is, want the red. I is want compared. The you go get the red if you want is compared to kindness, love, and generosity, kind of like the sweetness of honey. Red sting, sting. But red stinger. You were gonna make a red stinger? Well, good, because that's the next part we're gonna do, okay? We're doing the stripes here, right? Does this look like a bee? Yeah. Okay, you're gonna do the stinger? I was doing the stinger. Ooh, that's a good stinger. And that's the next thing we're gonna talk about. The sting represents the sting of death the sting of sin and what did jesus do for us about that the sting of sin um something that arlo you see all the time and you point out to me all the time i'm gonna put wings on him happy happy little bee what do you see what is jesus what did jesus die on uh a cross a cross a cross <laughs> and see our little bee here yeah. Oh, she put an antenna on him. Good job. And so bees have been connected to Jesus for a long time. And even before Jesus was alive with God and everything. And so today we need to remind ourselves that Jesus, like the bees, love all creation, love all people, and want to care for all people, right? And give that sweetness to all people, but remind them that Jesus saved us from the sting of death. Isn't that cool? Oh, you made little antenna tops. Okay. And so, there we go. Our bee is very happy. 
And so I want you to think Bunny. about your, <laughs> your life um, like a bee, like a bee of Christ, okay? Fluttering to each and every place, bringing goodness, sweetness, and hope to all people and places. Be good and don't sting one another, right? Try to ignore that uh, part of our lives that, you know, that sin that creeps up, right? That makes us want to hurt one another because Jesus died for us and rose from the dead so that we would have good and eternal life, our sins forgiven. All right? Do you guys want to say goodbye? Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us. Thank you guys. <laughs> and now our sermon from my front yard. Grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, and of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm coming to you from my front yard today, in front of a troubled area of my yard. We have this beautiful new retaining wall, and about two years ago, people donated plants from their yards, different um, perennials to come up and uh, create a beautiful display um, in front of the parsonage, and I am grateful for that. Uh, different things that were given were hostas, uh, lilies, uh, some Russian sage, a uh, form of uh, brushweed, um, it's like a purpley flower, um, and some sedium, and they're all beautiful. However, the soil we also got, which was very rich soil, had some spores of nettles in them. So if you can see behind me, I have this lovely lily but right next to it is my arch nemesis, this nettle. These nettles that come up and take over and consume and take over the garden and chokes out these plants. Three times this year, I have already weeded this area and just last week I did it and I can already see they're coming back with vengeance. I know a lot of us have gardens and we deal with this each and every uh, day in the growing season. Um, and it's the text today that Jesus talks to us about. He talks to us about the wheat and the weeds and how the farmer wants to have the servants go out and pluck out all the, you know, out, out all the weeds, the things that are destroying the crop. But they decide to leave it because once the yield comes forth, the harvest, you'll be able to tell the difference between the wheat and the imposter wheat, the weed. And these are tricky things to think about because a lot of us can think of people in our lives that are considered to be those weeds in our lives. And let me tell you, I have those thoughts in my head too sometimes, especially in these times and places when people are especially stubborn and putting their foot down about odd things that you would think are not necessary or important. Um, but the thing here to understand is that we are both weed and wheat. Sinner and saint, like Martin Luther has taught us. Simulta simultaneously, we are together doing this. And it's difficult because um, sometimes we don't recognize that about ourselves or about others, that we can be both at the same time. Now, I had a conversation with my good friend and colleague, uh, Deacon Colleen Bernou, about um, nettles. Um, she's in, uh, she is Finnish and she's also Ojibwe um, from the Fond du Lac tribe um, in Wisconsin. Oh, and Cloquet, sorry, my bad. And um, I said, what is the purpose of nettles? because she and her people have uh, a good usage of plant material for medicinal purposes. And I often say to her, I ask her questions about this all the time, and I said, I don't, I don't like nettles, I don't see the point. It hurts your fingers, it consumes everything, it chokes out things, it makes it difficult to grow anything. And she reminded me that nettles only grow in very rich, prosperous soil. She said that they only grow where they feel that they will sustain life, where they can spread quickly and easily. She said, good for you, you have good soil. But then she also told me that um, nettles can be cooked down and used as a tea, um, where the, the 
part, the little needle parts get kind of, you know, broken down and they aren't painful, can be used for different salves if they're cooked down and to actually help heal and soothe nettle burn and different burns, um, kind of like aloe. And so I said, oh, I do see that it does have a purpose. And then that made me think about our gospel text today. So when we look at this, literally, this gospel text, there's a description Jesus tells us that, you know, when judgment day comes, God will sort out the good and the bad, the evil and the righteous. Um, if we look at weeds, like literal weeds, um, a weed is a weed is a weed, right? We don't think of it any different. But the m metaphor and the lesson that Jesus is trying to teach us in this time and place is that if we allow the weed to kind of grow alongside these plants that we love, we can figure out how to learn and how to change and evolve into what good soil we've been planted into and become good wheat, that sinner and saint, right? And you know, depending on the day, we will take growth forward and then other days the growth will fall back right sometimes our yield is not going to be as fruitful as we thought it would be because we have stumbled we have sinned in weird ways that we thought oh i'd never do that i never treat someone like that or i'd never say something like that and then the words come out of our mouths and we understand that we are not planting something fruitful this is a time and place where we should kind of examine ourselves in this kind of context, this wheat and weed. And I know this is a time and place where we want to divide things in two camps, right? Good, bad, you know, um, our political parties do that. Um, you know, this should be done or that shouldn't be done, you know, but we have to understand that when things are intermeshed like this, like these lovely nettles back here who are growing in and through my hostas and my lilies, we have to understand that the work that we do is gonna be tricky. We have to understand that sometimes the components of those two things working together mean that we have to do some self-regulation within ourselves. We have to understand that growth uh, looks at figuring out how we can work together hearing each other out, understanding what purpose we have behind the reasons that we do things. And, you know, ultimately, God has called us to nurture our good soil, even the, the soil of the weeds. Nurture that good soil. And, you know, I, it's a hard day for me each and every day when um, in these times and place, we have so many layers of stuff going on. And you know, we are in the weeds. That's a fun golfing term. We are in the weeds when the ball lands in the thick grass and we have to try to, you know, scoop it out and get it back on the right course. We are in the weeds on various things in our world. And it's so difficult. And I know we are all so tired. We are so tired. We just want to have things clear cut and decided and a good decision to be made. But the hard thing about that is that there are no direct clear cuts and ultimately we can only try to take the best step forward the best usage of our time our gifts our talents and our understanding that the person next to you whether they are weed or wheat is beloved also by god still that righteousness and that rain still falls on them as well as you this is grace this is the grace that Jesus is teaching to us today, that we have time and momentum and ability to change our growth, our ability to change what we yield in this life, whether it be this very moment, the days and weeks to come, or even in years to come. But God holds us accountable and makes us understand that within all this, our brokenness will hold us to the righteousness, like interwoven braid of hope and love, God holds us accountable in our sinner and sainthood. So when you look about your life today and in your life in the Christian faith of following Christ as a disciple, look at the mission that you have in the world. Are you only focusing on what annoys the crap out of you? Yeah, I said crap. Uh, annoys the crap out of you or the things where you can learn something new about that 
situation. Maybe develop a new idea and a new kind of mindset about why that might be happening or why a person behaves in the way that they do and understand that you know, we have to have these hard conversations sometimes. We have to do that cultivation of figuring out why and how we can work together and grow together and be the kingdom of God together. So I ask you to look forward in your future and God, whether you are nettles or lilies, know that God is watching out for you, loving you, taking care of you, and also asking you to do the right thing, to do the kindest thing towards creation and humankind. I'm letting the nettles grow. God, God give me patience. I'm letting the nettles grow after talking with Colleen. And sometimes we all have to do that too, to hear out what goodness can come from this in the situation that we all have within our good soil. God be with you all. Amen. The hymn of the day is also another uh, beloved hymn uh, that has been recorded and uh, performed uh, by Steve and Laura McCann in their home. It is Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. And so please sing along uh, loud and proud from wherever you are. This is a wonderful, blessed hymn. Come the fount of every blessing to my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. While the hope of endless glory fills my heart with joy and love, teach me And confess together with the whole world, we continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. And on the third day, he rose again and ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy, Catholic, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time, I would like everyone uh, to get out your virtual piece if you're able to do it. If you are not able, please message someone so they can join and send your piece along. Um, otherwise, just text people throughout the day today um, and let them know that you are praying for them, that you give peace and joy to them in this time and place and find good ways to grow up that hope that we all are looking for in this time and place. 
So I say to you, the peace of the Lord be with you. And you reply, and also with you. Uh, blessings and peace to you all in God's holy name. I ask you to share that peace with your neighbors online and around you at this time and place. We now continue with the prayers of the people again read by Irene Anderson of Grace or of Delgro Delgrove Emanuel. Thank you again, Irene. I appreciate it. Please join me for the prayers of the people. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of the harvest, you sow the good seed of the gospel of Jesus Christ into your field. Help your church throughout the world to be both diligent and patient, full of resolve and gentleness, that our witness may be faithful to your intentions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all space and time, your whole creation groans in labor pains, awaiting the, free, the gift of new birth. Renew the earth, sky, and sea, so that all your creation experiences freedom from the bondage of decay. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the nations, teach us your ways, that we may walk in your truth. Mend the fabric of the human family, now torn apart by our fearful and warring ways. Guide us by your mercy, grace, and steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, you accompany those who suffer and are near to the brokenhearted. Open our hearts to your children who are lonely and abandoned, who feel trapped by despair, and all who suffer in any way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the seasons, in the midst of summer, give us refreshment, renewal, and new opportunities. We pray for the safety of those who travel. We pray for those who cannot take the rest they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God of life, those who have died in you shine like the sun in your endless kingdom. We remember with thanksgiving the saints of all times and places and saints close to us. Gather us with them on the day of salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All right. Hello, everyone. Our family is gathered together for the meal, the meal of our Savior, just like he did with the beloved around his table the night before he died and then eventually rose from the grave. Um, if you are needing to do communion at home, Find something bready and something juice or grape-like, um, and we will do that together today. So I'll give you a moment to go and scrounge up those things, and uh, we will join together in our worship of and our meal together. In the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Hold on one second. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. This is like in the red church. Yes, just like in the red church we do this, <laughs> and in the white church. All right. Together, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us now at this time taste and see that the Lord is good. Body of Christ given for you. 
and the blood of Christ shed for you. All right. Penny, are you up first? All right. The body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Okay. My turn. Mm -hmm. The body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Eric, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Would you, Penny, do you want to serve me? The body of Christ, say that. The body of Christ. Given for you. Given for you. I just need okay. a little more because it's, oh. and the, the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Harlow, you need more Jesus? Mm -hmm. Well, we're not going to double dip. <laughs> we got it. Well, it's just ours, so I guess you can take another dip. All right. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bless you and keep you in his grace. Together, let us pray as Jesus, or together, let us say the prayer after communion. God of the welcome table. In this meal, we have feasted on your goodness and you have, and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth, sustained by these gifts, so that we may share your neighborly love for all people. Through Jesus Christ, the abundant giver of life. Amen. Amen. Thanks, everyone, for having this meal together, silly boy. Okay, bye-bye. Our sending hymn today is uh, a hymn known as You Are Mine. And if you would sing along uh, with us, uh, it will send us out into the world and remind us that God is with us in every shape, place, and time. And so thank you again, Steve and Laura, for this gift. We appreciate you and give thanks for your talent given to us this day. Thank you so much. Receive the blessing today. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. God, the Creator, Jesus the Christ, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Before I go today, just a reminder, if you know anyone who uh, has n does not have access to our online worship services, uh, if you would let Becca, Secretary Becca at the church know either through email or phone message or let myself know uh, through email or phone message, 
uh, that we are you are looking to help that person out be more connected to our church uh, have them send or send us their names and we'll be glad to have that sent to them or a phone call to be given to them in connection and um, possibly a safe social distant uh, uh, visit to be done I give thanks for each and every one of you for your genuine hopeful hearts in the midst of all of this I am blessed to be your pastor and I give thanks for all of you please be kind to one another think of the neighbor when you go out into the world and know that you should go in peace Christ sends us forth in Jesus name we pray amen thank you so much for being good people have a lovely day and be safe bye-bye